When you work on mechanical items, eventually you're going to run into bearing failure. Having to swap out bearings, take them off, reinstall them. And there's a couple tricks that make them easier than others. This is a very expensive air compressor motor that has a, a shot front bearing. The back bearing's okay, the front one's shot. Before it completely goes out and disintegrates itself, which will destroy the motor, we're going to put a new bearing on. I got my new bearing, and it's as simple as just pulling off the old one, putting on the new one, right? But it's not, because these are press fit, and it's locked on there. So we've got to be able to get that off and get this one on. And before we do that, let's actually get this prepped. And the way we do that is by heating it up. This right here is probably about 45 degrees or so. It's been sitting in the garage, it's nice and cold. And I'm gonna measure the inside diam diameter of this and we are at 1.18, yeah, 1.18 roughly. And we're gonna heat this up so it expands, so it slides over this cold shaft. And got a pot of boiling water. And we're gonna double and I bag could it. just heat this up with a torch, but I don't want to run the risk of boiling out the grease. So I'm just gonna set it in this 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degree water for a while, and just let it get up to temperature while we man manhandle this. Now, you might think this is your go-to. You might go with this. Or even, here's a nice old one that I'm missing one leg. Hey, if anybody has a leg to one of these, I'd love to get the other leg for this. But I'll probably end up just making one. Or something like a bearing separator, get that behind there, get a plate on. But you will fight the living dickens with one of these and bend stuff and break these. The easiest way to do it is by cutting it off. And to cut it off, generally a 3 inch die grinder is your friend because you can get in there but first we got to remove there's two different bearings uh, well two different uh, pieces to it first we're going to remove the cage I tried to re-grease it and get it to see if I could bring it back to life tried to clean it out you know hopefully hoping there was just some grit or something stuck in there but it was more than that and then I'm going to try to I'm going to punch out this bearing cage. I see people trying to cut through this all the time and you'll spend way too long trying to cut this moving thing around and grind everything. So we're just going to punch out the shield and pull out the ball bearings. It's just two pieces of metal that are just tack welded in and hold the balls. The ball bearings exactly where you need them to be. Now oh, there we go. See we got the outside bearing cage. Now we can just pry off the whole cage with a screwdriver that's not a pry bar but is a pry bar. Is there really anything better? Even a pry bar doesn't do as good as a screwdriver. Let's see if we can just grab onto that. Rip it out. Oh, the other race is pulling out. So we've got the whole cage ripped out. That's just two pieces spot welded together all the way around. And now all of our ball bearings should fall to one side. And we should be able to, this is how they assemble it. Just pull our cage off, there we go. So we've got a cage off and all of our bearings. And I'm just gonna put a slit right across there. Generally you kinda gotta go at an angle but I'm just going to put a slit across there. You don't have to go all the way down because this steel for these bearings is extremely hard and extremely brittle. So I got my cold chisel and we'll just get this in this crack and we're just going to wedge it open. There, it split right open. And it slides right on and off like nothing. You'll fight it forever and if I would have done heat, you know, if I would have applied heat to this, I would have melted all this. I did touch it a little bit with the thing. But there, hot out of the water, and it's up to 1.184, so it's grown three, four thousandths. And this is still, even this piece I took off, even with that split, still has some good amount of resistance on it. So, but this, we should be able to, it just slides on like butter, like nothing. So... Put it in, 
Give it a couple seconds and it'll cool down and lock itself on. No sound at all. So I'm sure you guys want to hear it fire up now. You know it's a big motor when you, you got to pull out this extension cord. The seven and a half horsepower single phase. About as big as they come in uh, single phase. Let's fire up. There we go, a huge relief. Replacing this, uh, this single phase motor is actually going on in a huge industrial air compressor that was running in a three phase motor that I don't have at my home. So I have to run single phase. So I had to buy this big girl out with a three phase, in with the single phase and I can run it. Thanks for watching guys. See you guys soon. Bye. And for a quick lesson in who the heck cares is why it makes it so difficult with a puller is because you have ramps in here. Um, the inside race is just like this. The outside race is just like this. And you have the ball bearing in here. You put a puller on the outside that pulls it pulls it. This is stuck on a center shaft. Puller is, is pulling it off. The harder you pull on this outside surface, it wedges the ball into there and into there and actually clamps the center section tighter on the shaft. So a puller makes it more difficult to come off the shaft than easier. Warning, this is a public notice. If you aren't subscribed to or don't watch another 65 for video, the entire internet will cease to exist. Take the first step by clicking the subscribe button on the screen or watch one of the videos shown.